muted. Can you hear me? No, yeah. I can't hear a thing. I can't hear you. I can't see you. <laughs> How are you? I'm okay. How are you? Good. God. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. I'm going to try expanding, uh, expanding my view. There we go. Excellent. And you are going to be introducing me, I'm assuming. Of course. And you can hear and see me. Um, have I the ability to share my screen at the moment or not yet? Not yet, not yet, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. I will wait for your authority. <laughs> not yet. We're okay. having Carlos join us uh, very soon. Very good. Thank you. Let me step back. Excellent. Very good. I'm ready when you are. I'm just going to top up my water really quickly. We're we're actually uh, early. We are. Okay. Early. Okay, good. good. Excellent. Well, give me a moment and I'll be right. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, Terry. Hello, Diane. Hello, April, Philippa. How you doing? How's everybody doing today? Good, good, good. All right. So it's uh, 2.53, uh, just a few minutes before we get started. We are expected, we're expecting a, a good turnout today. We had over a hundred and uh, how many? Over 172. Over 172 registrations today for today's event. That's really good. That's really good. We are hope we are expecting um, we're expecting probably close to eighty people today at least that actually end up joining. Um, and uh, for those that are here early, thank you for being so 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 on time. Um, we have uh, some of the luxury cruise connections advisors are also joining our call today. And you will recognize them because right next to their name, you're going to see an asterisk uh, or you're, you're just going to see luxury cruise connections right next to their name. So that'll help you recognize anybody that is on, uh, you know, on this event that is part of the luxury cruise connections team. And uh, the reason why I say this is because I very much encourage everybody to ask your questions and share your thoughts on the, on the chat. But um, if you at any point get contacted or get um, in touch with directly with one of our advisors, then you're very much able to also ask questions directly and you're able to communicate and ask very specific questions. Um, you know, sometimes you'll have some questions about a particular sailing or a particular reservation. Those, uh, obviously, we're happy to answer uh, privately. So. Uh, we haven't done an, uh, a, a virtual event in some time, kind of give, kinda giving everybody a little bit of a, of a break, right? While we get our thoughts together and get our stuff together, right, uh, Darren? Hello, Carlos. How's it going, yes, Absolutely. Very good indeed. How are you doing? Doing great. Doing great. Excited. Excited about today. Uh, you know, we, we uh, 
like I was saying, uh, we were expecting a very nice turnout today. Very um, good. We, um, uh, we, 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 had, we had an entire season that we were doing almost every other week back to back uh, uh, virtual events. And yeah. then it got, it got to a point where uh, we just had nothing new to share. <laughs> right? so uh, we kind of got tired of saying well we don't know <laughs> yeah. and so um, we could to our world <laughs> and yeah. then we find ourselves, uh, hopefully today is a little bit uh, a little bit different uh, you know uh, a necessity unfortunately but I think you know the information we'll be sharing will be informative you know and I think we're all looking for we're all looking for a bit of peace of mind aren't we yeah, I think I think we're all looking for, um, a, you know, even beyond peace of mind, right? It's going to reduce the uncertainty level, right? It's just at least know what we are dealing with and what the expectation is, right? Absolutely, absolutely. The, the, the industry has certainly changed. Uh, the world has certainly changed in the last several months. And, and a lot of our guests, a lot of our clients, a lot of our attendees tonight are going to want to know you know what what's up what's up with the you know with the cruise world yeah what's no, absolutely right and uh you know i think we've we're all yeah, as brands and, and cruise lines ourselves we're, we've all been working diligently um in many cases working together to ensure that we're all on the same page but then you know splintering off to do our own unique features yeah and i think the information i'm going to be sharing with you today is going to show you, you know, I think how far Viking has definitely come and the time investment that we're putting into it to ensure that, you know, your, your, your fantastic clients and, and, our, and our guests will yeah. feel, you know, have a, have a feel for what it's going to be like yeah. as of today, right? Because tomorrow's a new day. <laughs> yeah. No, absolutely. And, and so what, we, what we're going to do is kind of to give everybody a little bit of structure here. Um, So what we're gonna what we're gonna what we're gonna see is uh, let me I guess we can start with some brief kind of preliminary introduction. So uh, for those that don't know, I'm Carlos Ettery and I'm the CEO of Luxury Cruise Connections. Um, and Denise here is our marketing manager. You probably have uh, had some communication from her, maybe you're not. Um, and Darren here with the blue background and the Viking logo is the director of business development for central and south florida or south florida florida um, now huh? <laughs> it's all florida now i take on the entire all florida country. okay there you go yeah. um and and, and uh mm -hmm. and, and and so he he will he's uh he's our direct point of contact with viking he's the one that uh translates everything that happens over there in viking and takes our special needs and requests whenever we have some by the way, uh, uh, you've received an email this morning from Laura, one of our advisors. Yes, um, indeed. Yeah, so uh, that's that's on behalf of one of our clients. We need to make our make her happy. Harold, how you doing? Thank you for joining us. Good, good. When, if you if you if you instruct me to join, I join. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. Uh, Harold is uh, one of our newer Luxury Cruise Connections guests. He became a client recently. Uh, and uh, we're happy, very happy to have you. Very happy, happy to be here. And so, so um, anyway, so today is going to be uh, today is going to be an afternoon where we're going to learn. Well, it's afternoon and maybe morning for some of you, but today we're going to learn a lot about uh, biking cruises and specifically about uh, biking cruises uh, procedures and, and 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 what they have in place right now in terms of their return to sale protocols and what everybody can expect, right? So it's 3 p.m. right now. We have 40 participants in our uh, event today. I expect that that number is going to probably get too close to 60 or 70, we'll see. But regardless of that, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to allow about three to four more minutes for everybody to, um, to, you know, to, to, to chime in and uh, we're going to mute everybody as you come in so that we can allow for uh, Darren to then start with his talk uh, around 3.05. He's going to 
give us a short presentation of about 15 minutes where he's going to share with us the details, uh, as much detail as he can. And thankfully by now we have a lot of detail already on what's going to happen with Viking and what are their protocol. And then right around 320, 325 at the latest, we should, uh, we should have an opportunity to open up for questions. Um, you can ask your questions in the chat room. So in the chat box, you'll be, you can type your questions for the entire team. Um, you will be also, you might also be contacted directly from, by one of our advisors, just so that we can introduce ourselves personally um, and make sure that we can uh, kind of start also a private conversation if you have specific questions about a particular booking or something like that, uh, we'd be happy to help. And then uh, we invite everybody to open up your mics and start asking questions. We also have a list of questions that some of you sent prior to uh, us starting this event, and then we'll be happy to, um, you know, just answer those as we as we can. So uh, once again, welcome everybody. Thank you for joining. For those that have just recently joined, I'm Carlos Ederi, CEO of Luxury Cruise Connections, and um, and 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 Darren uh, here with the blue background here and the Viking logo is uh, is our director of business development for Florida, and uh, and he's. Uh, how about we open up your mic, Darren, for a second? Sure, I'm I'm open. You know me. I'm ready to talk. I'm ready to talk at any time. <laughs> <laughs> so um, why don't we? Uh, why don't we? Um, I don't know. Why don't we start with some some basic introductions? Why don't Why don't you share with our audience here today? What do you do for Viking? What's your what you know? And, what, and what's your relationship with us? And you know how how, how is that? Going? I'm sorry. You are again who? <laughs> 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 Not cool. Not cool. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Good afternoon, uh, Carlos. Thank you so much for the welcome. Uh, yeah, I am Darren Dolan. Um, I am director of business development for Viking. I am now going to probably start in the beginning of March. I'll be starting my 11th year with this company. So, for those of you who are maybe familiar with the brand, you will be aware that we have come a long way in this 11 years. I've seen from the beginnings, right, where you had eight or nine little river ships. Uh, to where we grew our Viking River Fleet now to what, some 72 ships. Um, introduction of ocean cruising in 2015. We're about to name the 10th of those ocean vessels. Recently announced uh, expedition cruising starting in 2022. Brand two brand new ships there. And some of the exciting news I shared the last time uh, with those who were with us uh, was Mississippi cruising, right? Also starting next year in 2022. So. We're not just a couple of little boats floating up and down the rivers of Europe anymore. You know, we are touching more bodies of water uh, than any other cruise line, to be honest. So Great Lakes, Mississippi, North Pole, South Pole, you name it, we're, we're covering it. And it, it is my, my primary role uh, to be that, as, as uh, Carlos said, uh, we kind of like being a conduit, right? We are that spokesperson for our company partnering with our fabulous travel partners, such as uh, uh, Carlos and the entire team of Luxury Cruise Connections, who I've worked closely with many, you know, the tenure of some of your agents is, is unbelievable yourself. I remember going back to the old office there back in 2010, 2011, uh, where you were just kind of getting your feet wet in, in that, right? So uh, we, our relationship goes back a long way. Uh, you are a member of Virtuoso. Uh, what you know, an absolutely amazing consortia partner, and um, you are you you have been and continue to be a platinum cruise member as well, platinum circle cruise member, which is phenomenal. Um, you, know, you, you, you know, you've got to, you've got to make the goals to get there, and you've not just made the goals, but you've achieved them annually and surpassed them. So we put you up in a pedestal. You are you are <laughs> you're definitely great partners. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thank you for that. It's very great hands. It's it's certainly it's certainly a lot of fun doing business with with Viking. You know, one of the one of the things that we enjoy the most about doing business with Viking is your consistency and your, you know, there's uh, there's three major publicly traded cruise companies, but then you know, obviously everybody knows the NCLH and there are our CCLs and the Carnival Corporation, but then here comes Viking Cruises, a privately owned company out of California with an incredible vision that started literally from nothing and became just, you know, forget about the size. I mean, I think right now, I mean, as a single brand, you're the biggest one in the world, right? As, as a brand, right? But most importantly, 
what I like the most is, is, is the vision and the ability for you guys to just be always one step ahead of the game and kind of be a little bit of, of status quo disruptors in the, in, the, in the industry, right? And when it comes to safety protocols, for example, which is what we're going to talk about today, you know, what I find very interesting and, why, and the reason why you are the number one virtual event that we're hosting as we're getting ready to get back to normality when, you know, in the world of cruises is because we know and, we, and, and we're very certain that what we're about to share with our guests today is, I don't know, I don't know if to use the word revolutionary is, is appropriate, but certainly quite, you know, quite, quite different and quite um, um, bold, right? It, it's bold. And so, so we're very happy, very happy to have you. Um, you know, for those that, that don't know much about the Viking brand, hopefully today you'll have an opportunity to learn a little bit more about it. Like Darren said, Viking is uh, one of our top selling cruise lines and we, we support the, the Viking and the relationship because it just, you know, people love it, right? And I mean, those that go on Viking come back raving about it because it's consistent every single time, you know, and, 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 and um, just offering a, a, an incredible experience on board. Pre, pre, you know, pre departure and, and during the trip. So, um, Mike, uh, uh, Darren, you know, thank you very much for being here. Thank you for for joining us today, and thank you for carving a little bit of your very busy schedule to share with our guests uh, and attendees tonight about the uh, health protocols and what's going to happen with um, with Viking. And so, very quickly, just going to. Recap, uh, within, for the next 15 minutes, we're going to allow Darren to share with us a little bit of a presentation. And once he's done with that, we're going to open up uh, for everybody to share your questions or thoughts in uh, uh, you know, open mic. And in the meantime, as Darren is speaking, if you have any questions that you wanna make sure that we address toward the end of the presentation, you can also type them in the chat box and we'll be happy to read them for you at the end and make sure that uh, Darren answers to the best visibility. So, uh, Darren, go ahead and uh, please take it away. Yeah, thank you. Let me uh, share my screen here. And obviously, my biggest challenge is I talk too much, and I always overpass my 15, 20 minutes. But we'll, we'll do what we can do here today. So, uh, again, I think we've done all the introductions, and thank you. And thank you all very much for, for joining today. Um, it is quite unique, right? I'm so used to delivering all this wonderful cruise news and sharing stories about traveling across the world with Viking. And then uh, life changed for us all, um, you know, March last year, March 11th to be exact, uh, when Viking realized and understood, we, again, uh, to Carlos' point, we were the trailblazers. We were actually the first cruise line to halt operations. And we realized there was something very serious and that we did it had to be taken care of. And unfortunately, as we've seen that in the world, uh, it's just something has not gone away. But what we were able to do immediately, seeing the vision that this was not going to be an overnight event, was to immediately set work on probably what, how we would have to return to cruising when that day came. That day still hasn't come. It's, it's very sad. It's very time. But what we have not done is just sat back and waited for it to happen. On the very least, you know, Viking is renowned for, and Carlos touched on this, for expansion on growth entering into new realms. Well, this is something we had to do ourselves as well. And we did so immediately, got sell immediately. Um, our ships were tied up. We didn't, we didn't um, cancel a single contract of our employees. Every single member of staff of Viking, the onboard I'm re referencing now, was kept on contract the entire year, pretty much knowing that we wouldn't be returning to cruising next year, last year at least. And we start going, get going on this healthy safety program and uh, working on, on the information we had back in March to the information we have today, obviously is, is a different fact. And everything I'm sharing with you was pretty much in the announcement that we gave at the end of last year in December. Uh, there was a recent uh, update uh, from a requirement from the CDC, which I'm sure will come up in questions or I can address it anyway. But we truly believe that we are going to be the gold standard leaders when it comes to safety and, and, and health for uh, not just, you know, you, our value guests, but obviously our crew and staff members who join us. I mean, what other cruise line goes out, searches for, creates a position of chief health officer 
and ascertains the the the, the duties and the the the, the, the unbelievable uh, knowledge that retired um, admiral vice admiral um, dr dr bono had in coming to viking and then immediately on her on her positioning got to work with a, a, a team within the company, some newly acquired staff members to oversee this entire COVID. Well, not just, not just COVID, because we're gonna be careful on some of the items here. You know, health and safety exists all day long, right? 24 hours a day. Uh, you know, I'm sure some of us on the call have been, you know, heard of the norovirus situations that they can, can outbreak on, on ships and such like that. Our operations are going to be put in place, not just for today under the COVID world, but in place then to ensure that we can manage any other different outbreaks going off in the future. So Dr. Bonner most definitely has been instrumental in this. Obviously, with her um, military ties, with her government ties, it really has allowed us to work in conjunction with the CDC and keeping ahead and abreast of what their requirements are going to be. We cannot do this alone. We are a cruise line, or some people like to say we're a marketing company with a few cruise ships. Um, but at the same time, this, this will require professionalism. This will require partnerships. And again, we've gone out and partnered with some uh, very unique uh, partners, as you will see here, globally, of course, uh, to ensure that every step and every requirement is going to be is going to be followed to the fullest and, and to the best ability, keeping you par you know your your health and safety paramount at all times. Four different companies there you see: Medicover, uh, DMV, GL, uh, Vicland, as well as Ecolab as well. And these partners are going to be working in conjunction with us, taking care of their specialty fields again from anywhere from testing on board the ships to ensuring that we have these relationships with medical facilities and medical centers uh, throughout all the locations that we sail as well as the sanitization and cleaning and and provide provisions of newly uh, required equipment on board from you you know from the uva lamps to the air conditioning filtering systems that are going to be used as well and uh, remarkably um, what we've done on our ocean ships, what we're going to look at here briefly. We may have been the first to cease operations. We're not in a rush and we're not in a hurry to say we were first back to sailing. Um, we, had, we had the pleasure of having our chairman, Mr. Torsten Hagen, and many of you have probably seen his videos uh, throughout this time or familiar with his works from throughout. What Mr. Hagen and the entire Viking family is looking forward to is a return to safe sailing. When is it right? When will the, when will the you know, environment correct? When, somebody I heard the other day, when will, be the, when, when will the appetite for returning be right? Be right, right? So we've got to ensure that A, you feel comfortable, B, that the, the locations and, and destinations we're cruising to are ready, they are open, and they have the backup system and, and, and the requirements that we're going to need. Uh, working with those previous uh, partners you saw there, to ensure that you're returning. We do operate a small ship fleet throughout. Um, you know, you're familiar with our river ships in Europe, so uh, built for 190, you'll see that I'm stressing built for 190 guests. Um, things are gonna change in the world. Obviously, we're gonna be looking at less, you know, carrying less guests. Um, our ocean ships, all identical, 930 passengers, no inside cabins, at least a veranda stateroom. Each and every one of our staterooms on all our vessels were already, previous to the COVID situation, already receiving independent air conditioning into your staterooms. Now we'll be setting aside staterooms throughout, throughout our entire fleet to assign those as um, uh, isolation staterooms should, God forbid, you know, anything occur on board. We will have a location to take care of those that will. Uh, the introduction, obviously, of the laboratories on our ocean ships is going to be huge as well. So being that small ship operator really gi is giving us an opportunity to, you know, take care of the, 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 first of all, the ships ready for your arrival. Planning. We're all, you know, at this point in time, many of you have already plan your future cruise with us. And it's going to be very important. And what we're going to see is a few procedures and changes that are going to occur as we get closer to your, to your cruise coming up. Um, definitely, if, not, if, if it was not important before, 
And I know that the entire team at, um, at, at Luxury Cruise Connection do an amazing job to ensure that your investment of travel is covered. Insurance, travel insurance is so, so important. And it's never been more important than we're going to be seeing as we return to cruising. You know, I always get the story, you know, if you own a magic, magical car, do you insure it? Do you insure your house? You know, these, these are investments we make. Your vacation uh, is an investment and it's only fitting and right that you, that you cover that investment with travel insurance. And I'm not here pushing my insurance. I'm just saying, absolutely, be, you know, be aware that the situations and the conditions you can find yourself in will we'll need travel insurance more so than ever before. As we get closer to your embarkation date, we will be sending out questionnaires asking any current, you know, over the last two weeks or so, have you, you know, experienced any of this, any of these um, um, situations, any of these symptoms? If there are any flags answered on that questionnaire, our, our, our travel company and uh, travel partners back in, in, in Switzerland will then work in conjunction with our reservations department here in Los Angeles and we will then take action accordingly. So I mean, immediately capturing any, any red flag situations well before you board a flight to leave to, to your destination. Speaking of flights to destinations, we carried in 2019, well over 300,000 passengers, flew 300,000 passengers. We have the largest air contract of any cruise line in the world with, with our wonderful travel partners, with our wonderful air partners. You know, people keep saying, you know, what's it going to like? Are you going to require to do this? Will this be a requirement? It's asking the cruise lines and, and travel companies and tour companies. At the end of the day, and when we look at our product particularly, you're not going anywhere before you get on that plane, right? And at the end of the day, we're all going to have to abide by whatever the requirements are going to be by the airlines. So, you know, it's very important that we're working in tandem uh, with the airline partners to ensure that arrival in our destinations, transfers. Uh, for those of you who travel with us, you'll see these bright red shirts that I'm seeing today. You're familiar with them. You would have received your red Viking stickers, your red Viking luggage tags. You are spotted the moment you enter into that, ho into that airport with the Viking representatives. How are we gonna manage this to ensure social distancing and making sure we're not gathering in larger groups and needed? by investing and employing in more Viking representatives to be at those airports that meet and greet, put you into smaller groups, hire more transfer vehicles with a more of a focus on smaller vehicles and allowing then smaller groups to be transferred either to your pre-cruise event or to your ship itself. So again, ensuring that we, you know, minimizing the amount of large groups that we will be accepting on the vessels. Um, safe check-ins, you're going to see a difference in check-in to, uh, to our river cruiser element as well. If you are coming to, to sail with us, you will be taking your temperature prior. There will be a medical survey. You will be tested for the first time. None of us, if any of you have had the evasive swab up the nose test where you, you know, they actually take your brain out at the same time, there's none of that going to be taking place. The PCR testing is going to be do, done by means of, of saliva. If you're on our ocean ships, again, the testing and the results will be formatted on board the ships. If you're on our river ships, we're working with the local partners to ensure that those results come back quickly. And then we take the following steps at that moment in time. So even before people get on the, on the vessel, we will know immediately who is getting onto the ship, what is their current condition, what is the current situation, and it's safe to do so. I think that's going to be a very important kind of creating our own bubble from the get-go, which is going to be most important for us in, in doing so. And then the fact that we do have the PCR testing, which is obviously as, you know, approved by the CDC. This is absolutely up and above what the requirements are. We are currently um, finalizing the installation of the laboratories on our ocean ships, which will be manned by, by um, laboratory assistants, specialists and assistants, an entire small team. I alluded to earlier, we can't do that on our river ships, but testing will still take place on a daily basis with those saliva tests being taken in the morning, sent out by courier to, the, to the, uh, our associated uh, medical members wherever we will be cruising in Europe in order to do that. Infrared um, uh, cameras throughout the vessel on the, main, on the main tracks on the ship, taking your temperatures on a regular basis. So 
you know, again, if there's any flag or anybody passing by with a, you know, that which is demarked then as a, as a high temperature and such like that, that's flagged. And, we, and because again, we're a small ship operator, right? It's easy to trace, it's easy to track. And we do have that then that the advantage of being able to do so. So the entire time, you know, each and every single day, this testing is taking place, you know, to do our very best to ensure that we, uh, you know, we can capture anything well in time, should anything, should there be an outbreak. And uh, having these medical staff members on board a vessel is going to be a necessity. We will be seeing folks on our river ships. We will be minimizing the amount of standard staterooms we will be uh, opening for operation on our Viking long ships. That's why I said earlier, ships were built for 190, but you're going to see the occupancy come down on those vessels, uh, particularly as we get back to safe sailing, um, because we want some of those staterooms, again, as I say, blocked for quarantine purposes, should it happen, also for accommodations for additional medical staff that we're going to have on the vessels as we start to sail as well. You know, uh, it's, it goes without saying, you know, we live in a world where the social distancing, we, we hear this all the time, right? And we are going to have to create this environment on board our ships to the furthest matter, you know, to make it as safe as possibly can be, but to be at least a base of on, on what your experience is going to be. You are going to see perspex screens at the front desk, at the, at the um, concierge desk and, and such throughout the vessels. The, Public areas will be demarked. There will, when we expect whether there be heavy traffic, there will be markers on the floor as well to ensure that every everybody is keeping a safe distance. Mask wearing will be a requirement throughout the vessel uh, in the public areas, and just like it is for, depending on on, on the state and, and city that you 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 live in, you know, uh, when we get into the restaurant, it's kind of we can sit down now. We're in position. We're safe. We have a safe surrounding about us we can remove our masks in those, in those uh, locations. The staff members, the crew members will, will remain masked at all times. So that's very important to, to see and to, to, to take into consideration as well. All about ensuring that the social distancing is, is, is correct, as well as the spacing and the mask wearing as well. Onboard sanitization, I mean, for those who have, have, have sailed with us, I'm sure you will have, you know, due to the fact that our ships are constantly spotless, brand new, you know, brand new ships, two, a ship that was built in 2015 in the industry is still seen as brand new, right? So I'm talking specifically about our ocean vessels, whereby already Viking in, in, well in advance, we always had folks on board who were brought on board for one specific reason. That was to clean and to polish and to clean and to polish 24 hours a day because we got all that leather on board. We got all that brass, all that glass. So these members of staff were already hard at work. This is going to be upped now because we are going to continue them now with sanitization as well. We are going to be investing in um, on our ocean vessels on these robots, these UVC light robots that while we're all fast asleep in our staterooms, these robots are going to be going around the ship creating further sanitization. They can't fit on our river ships, but at the same time, we will be upping the ante as far as sanitization and cleaning is concerned during the, during the night hours as well. The dining and the entertainment, you are gonna see a difference when you return to our dining rooms. You are going to see that there will be no buffet form of dining initially. Um, you know, we're going away with that. It's, it's just not gonna be a possibility at all. The dining issue, which was always on a buffet basis, will no longer be in place. I've seen the plans bringing those wonderful items that we've enjoyed, maybe on the river ships for breakfast and luncheons. They're going to be brought as tea trays to our table, so we're not missing out. It's just going to be brought to you in a different format until such times we can start opening up. You're going to see how the space, the tables are differently spaced in the restaurants as well. As I alluded to it earlier, keeping that safe distance between diners and guests alike. Entertainment is going to be, we're going to be looking at splitting entertainment times and presentation times. And then also upping the ante of the in-state room um, capabilities as well. So for those who river crews with us on each and every day when the program director is giving his his presentations we're going to be doing those now at two time slots we're also going to encourage folks to 
stay in their stateroom, open their cabin and their balconies and enjoy the presentation from there, being able to enjoy the drinks in there. There'll be no sitting at the bar. Drinks will be served then by means of waiters and waitresses throughout as well. So we are gonna see a difference on, on that uh, initially, of course, in the beginning, uh, to see that that's, you know, to encourage the fact that we are continuing to enjoy social distancing and then yeah, but just we want to be able to try. With experience as less as we possibly can. The spa and the fitness on the oceans uh, will remain, some features will remain open, of course, but it will all be by, uh, by um, appointment only. And the smaller pool sections will be closed. Uh, the steam will be closed. The snow grotto, for those who enjoyed that on board the ship, because of its, you know, the closeness you will be to other guests, it makes sense they will be uh, not open to public. Uh, also the encouragement are to our guests, on our ocean vessels to, um, if they're making reservations to have services, you know, the spa, massage and hair and such like that, and to go to the, to the pool within the health center, we're gonna encourage them to don their robes in their staterooms and make their way then to the health center by means of that to again, eliminate the gathering of folks in the small uh, changing room outlets on board the spa. One of the things we did as again, March, April last year, immediately our operations department got in contact and touch with all our vendors in Europe who themselves were experiencing the same situation. They too understand that when travel returns, life will be different. So we got all these fabulous vendors, tour guides, bus companies that we work with throughout. And there's been an ongoing program since early of last year to ensure that everybody is trained and expects to carry out the Viking requirements, as well as most importantly for them, their local requirements, local government's requirements. You know, people say, will I have to wear a face mask when I'm on tour? What we say right now is the, is the safest way to say is yes, because what, what is today may not be tomorrow, may not be in, in August or September, or definitely not, you know, as, as we go into, into years ahead, but the safest way and the best way to say, yes, it will be a requirement, but it can change. That the guides, when, when, they, when, you, when you're grouped together, that's another thing, that tour groups are gonna be even smaller than they have been in the past. By us investing again heavily in hiring additional tour guides. The tour guides will have gone through their trainings. The tour guides will be carrying with them at all times, additional face masks, um, hand lotions that are gonna be handed out at all times as well as, as you know, we have the, well, if you do know, we have the, um, the headphone system, right? The quiet box system, which itself enables us to go along with our guides, stand in a spacious area and still be able to hear clearly while enjoying our tours. As I mentioned, tour groups will be smaller. Um, we will not be filling our buses. There will be missing spaces on the buses, on the seats on the buses as well. The tour buses and motor coaches that we use will only be filled from the back door and no longer from the front and the back door. Just to enable them, there will be a single flow of traffic, again, getting onto these, onto these motor coaches where they are needed. Uh, and again, it will be, it's gonna be very important for the guides at the, at, the, at the very beginning when we all get together to highlight to you and go over what the local requirements of that area, of that town, of that city is going to be prior to us you know, embarking, because it, it, we are all working in conjunction with local authorities and local governments. We have to be responsible. We will be kept you know, accountable uh, for our guests to ensure that you know, uh, being there is, is an honor. Uh, we, it's, it's a pleasure to be there, but to ensure that you know, we are not the ones um, you know, going against whatever the requirements are gonna be at that time. And again, health checks, as I said, are going to be done on a daily basis with, with, the, uh, uh, with the testing on board. Very important. And again, what that's going to do then is to ensure to minimize the amount of outer influence we have coming in among our staff, among our guests on board. And at the same time, you know, at least 24 hours prior to that, you were tested and you knew what your current situation was uh, prior to you leaving. Uh, back to the United States, or if you're following on to a post-cruise um, extension with us, then testing will continue as it has 
um, on board the vessel when you go when you come to join us on your post cruise experience as well. And um, I know that that's that's probably going to be one of the big questions because this is where the latest change took place, the latest CDC requirement took place, and I get questions uh, probably six, seven times a day without exaggerating. Is Darren, what is what is Viking doing to ensure that? We follow the guideline requirements of the CDC now to show that you have uh, that you have shown a negative um, COVID test in the last 72 hours. I think by now you've all got the message that we will be testing daily on the ships, right? So what we are working on right now, when you consider the fact this is quite a new development, um, yes, we are. We do currently have the testing. We will be, you know, hosting the testing daily. What our, um, I don't want to say a challenge, but what our goal is right now uh, is with working with the, with the, uh, the partners that we uh, listed at the very beginning to work with them to ensure that then just not the test results are, you know, are, are, um, are brought, to, brought to front, but they come then with a backup document that then gets leaving us at the end of your, of your, uh, of your cruise with us will be in possession then of that certificate that says, I was tested in many cases, 24 hours ago, right? If you're leaving the next day of, of your final day, you're leaving and you have your, your certification there, of course. Now, everything I put forth there is uh, working on the rosy, working on the, on the assumption that everybody remains negative and nobody has any issues. Um, obviously, the situation arises where we do find folks that um, come back as positive. Uh, we discover on, on the cruise ship that they uh, have a fever and such. Immediately what, what occurs immediately is the isolation, both the track and trace of those guests, isolation, quarantine if so, on board, till we come to such a point where uh, we then give them a second test is provided. And if that comes back as a second test comes back as a positive, then obviously we have a situation where we have guests who are really, you know, showing positive for COVID. Disembarkation uh, procedures will take place wherever possible that is. Obviously, that could change if we're on ocean, on river. That's why we'll have this isolation quarantine state rooms already set aside. And then we'll work with our travel partners again, with our medical partners, in working on the repatriation of those guests who have, uh, who have been left the ship uh, under the, um, obviously, under the auspice of a Viking representative and representatives of our medical partners again, if hospitalization is needed, if any medical services are needed, of course, and then the repatriation at the same time. That will all be governed and managed by our Basel, Switzerland headquarters. They, in turn, will be in contact with our uh, customer relations department here in Los, over in Los Angeles, and they, in turn, will then be in contact with your your travel agent here at Luxury Cruise Connection. So there will be an entire network of communications among many, many uh, bodies and, and, and organizations to ensure that, you know, again, things are handled to the best, very best of availability. We will only then continue to cruise on once clearance is required, once um, clearance is given by local authorities, testing is done, and now we're safe to, to continue on our way. You know, and I said, uh, you know, this was done for COVID, but uh, if need be in the times where maybe we, we're sitting with a norovirus situation or something to that effect, or outbreaks of other things, these procedures and plans can be put into place. It's just a matter of switching them on and off. You know, obviously we don't, we don't envisage, we don't want to look into the future and say, oh, cruising is always going to be like this. Because up until March of last year, cruising was never like it is now, right? And it won't be that for forever. So... Uh, again, we're preparing, we're doing exactly what we should be doing, but not, not what we're doing, but surpassing what's got required. Uh, I know many of you on the, on the call, on the presentation today, have probably got cruises coming up, and you want to know what's it going to be like in August? You know, that's eight months from now. Um, things are changing daily, you know, and it's very, it's very challenging and difficult for us to give pinpoint answers, but um, I hope that the information I've shared with you will, will show that our plan is in place. We are ready to switch on. The, the moment we are given clearance uh, by local governments, by CDC organizations here in the United States, that Viking is ready to operate as safely as possible 
and with obviously with your health and safety at the forefront. So uh, that's pretty much what we have. All right, fantastic, Darren. Thank you very much for such detailed and insightful, uh, insightful uh, um, presentation. Uh, what we're going to do now is we have a lot of questions in our chat box. So I'm going to go and start reading all of them in order as they came and try to address all of them as, as quickly as we can. Um, you know, we are, the, the, the schedule of, of today's event it was for an hour. So technically we are officially scheduled to end at four, but uh, we are, we just wanna let you know that we are gonna make sure we address all the questions and if we go over four, uh, Darren, you'll be able to stay with us for a little longer until we get all the well, questions. I have, I have another event after this, but I have a nice, I have a little window in between them, not a problem. And uh, I will answer to the best of my capability, to the knowledge that we have been provided. Uh, a lot of this, as I, as I said, is, is still in the works, right? We have the framework there. Um, but uh, if there's something I, I cannot answer directly to you today, and I will not attempt to give an answer if I do not know the answer, uh, then Carlos, you and I can work together. You can forward me yeah. those questions that are unanswerable. And as always, uh, yeah. I will go to our operations. Folks. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I just, I just want to point out, I just want to point out we have 90 participants today, Ooh. right? 90 participants today. That's, that's amazing because, you know, usually uh, when we did this toward the middle of uh, uh, July, August of last year, um, we were getting 40, 50, maybe 60 people. But the fact that we got 90 people in today's event really shows how anxious everybody is we're hungry. We're hungry. About, uh, yeah, no, no, of all of this so that we can get back to enjoying cruises again, right? Uh, a few, a, a few um, uh, things before I get started with these questions. Um, right now, we're going to continue to keep our mics muted for a little while longer. I'm going to go through the questions and then I'll open up the mics. Uh, so, uh, you know, once again, for those that joined a little bit later in the presentation, quick introductions one more time. Darren is the director of business development for Viking Cruises for Florida. I'm the CEO of Luxury Cruise Connections. Many of you have done business with us. I've done business in the past with us. Some of you have not. So for those that have not, we are Luxury Cruise Connections, um, one of the top partners for Viking Cruises. And Viking is one of the top cruises and, uh, and cruise uh, partners for us. We do an incredible amount of business with them. And not only will we always have the most competitive um, rates with Viking, but we provide incredible detail level of service and very, very um, 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 personalized level of service because we believe that the experience of booking cruises and of traveling on cruises has to be just absolutely perfect from the moment you book to the moment you come back. So uh, this is why we do this. We do this event so that we can have an opportunity to talk and to connect and to communicate with our guests and our clients and future clients um, and, and, and sharing our expertise and sharing uh, uh, you know, the, 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 you know, some of the reason for our relationship with biking and, and, and why it's so special. So, um, this is what we are, this is what we're going to do. We're going to start from the beginning. Um, wow. A lot of questions here. So let's see. <laughs> All right. So one, one key question here, Alan, uh, is asking us, do we expect to be back cruising by May and how will you control for, well, how we control for COVID, we already know. So will you be back cruising by May? Million dollar question, Alan. Uh, you know, we, we all want that crystal ball. We've all remained very positive each and every time. I, I will say that this is probably the latest Viking has gone without suspending operations beyond March. Uh, as I alluded to, we had our chairman, Mr. Hagen, uh, on a, on a uh, call the other day with, with the entire team and he was still upbeat. Currently, we are suspended through end of March with a few itineraries um, you know, just suspended in, in, into April. Um, as I alluded to, you know, day by day, um, we get closer, right? And, and things start to change and, we, and for the hopefully, for the positive. Um, it, it's, it, it's our goal and our aim, if we have not yet canceled May, then to us as a, as a company, to you as a, as a you know, a, a future guest with us or return guest with us, then we, we, we hope to say that May will be back. Um, and I think the second half of, of, of uh, the question was answered by the testing and everything we're going to do to control on board. You know, as I say, 
going to take a it's going to take a, the crystal ball to say exactly yes or no. But you know, um, we, we we're holding out hope. We really are holding out hope. And uh, again, not for desperation, but we're holding out hope for a return to safe sailing. I think that's very important to remember. So, so quick, quick thing. Um, if I see any questions that are very specific to a reservation or an existing or future reservation, I'm going to prompt one of our Luxury Cruise Connections team members to approach you directly privately so we can address those specifically. It, Darren, is it okay to share with everybody? We, we saw a form that was sent out to clients um, yesterday, I believe, that was inviting people to re register if they were... Um, if they're okay to participate in last minute uh, cruise opportunities. What do you know about that? So here I stand before you and say to you, we are living in an ever changing world. <laughs> Thank you for advising me of that because I had no clue. <laughs> so, <laughs> Welcome to our world. Um, I, 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 know the, I know the reasoning behind it, of course, and let's go back to Carlos to the CDC requirement, of course, that we are first before we get the green flag to cruise anywhere, particularly in the United States, right? And wherever it will be, we're going to have to pass some trials. And this is not Viking. This is, this is every single cruise line base in the United States here. We're going to have to do some trial cruises. And um, so if you are in possession of such a form and you, the more the merrier. Yeah. Yeah. So those, um, those invitations went out, I believe, to past guests initially. Where, that would, um, they, that would make sense. Uh, well, yeah, where they could register if they're interested in being notified of last minute cruising opportunities. Mm -hmm. So I guess it's a good implication of Viking really kind of uh, being very hopeful about making some, you know, what would be considered now last minute announcements, right? So hopefully, hopefully that'll be a case. Again, nothing official here, but this is just what's real, what's happening and what's out there. You know, I think that, and I think that kind of uh, points towards Alan's question. I think it was Alan, right? It was about May. You know, this is the first time such a, a, a you know form has been put out, right? So we didn't put one out in September. We didn't put one in October or, or December. Now we're in January, entering into February. We're seeing an uptick, and I think that's encouraging for us all. Right, right, and it, it's it's important that regardless of whether we know for sure the ships are going to go. I think what we do see is we see an incredible demand and just short supply, right? I mean, we see those ships uh, just going to wait list very, very quickly. So definitely, definitely a reason to kind of at, at least block your space, right? So uh, here's another question. Does Viking Air offer better airline pricing than if I book directly with the airline? Mm. Uh, great question. And it's non-COVID related. So I'm, 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 ha I'm happy to get such a <laughs> Well, I will go back to, to uh, my point I made about air travel and to say that 90% of folks sailing with us are flying with us. And that resulted again in 2019 with over 300,000 folks taking air with Viking. Now, as a result of that, I know Carlos and, and uh, the luxury cruise connections and uh, forest travel are very heavy on, on air aspect as well, right? You have a very healthy air program as, as, as we do too, um, you know, we, I, I think as a the, result of... I, I think the easiest way to answer that, Darren, and I'm sorry to yeah. kind of interrupt this, you know, as, as, as a travel agency, we've been doing air and having credible contracts, but when it comes to air with Viking and with the offers that you come up with of inclusive air or reduced air or, you know, 499 or 399 or 299 air, it's just... You know, it, it most of the times to make sense to take Viking Air, you know, for, for as much as, you know, so. It doesn't. It, it um, makes sense. It, it, look, if I, if, I were, if I was a guest and I was sailing, I would take our Air for sure. And there's Air Plus and there's ability to uh, upgrade your Air to business class and premium business and such like that. Unless you have very specific requirements of, you know, but anyway, we can, we can those, those are specific cases. Um, Donald is asking, what are you going to do with false positives? So let's say I walk up to the, you know, the pier and I'm going to board the ship, you're testing me before, and then boom, false positive. What happens? As I said, all results will be backed up with a secondary test. Good. So we, we are never going to take action based on the initial positive test. There will always be a follow-up test to that one. 
And then Alan also asks, will all, will everybody, crew and passengers be required to be vaccinated? Great question. I think that right now is the million dollar question in the industry. No cruise line has yet made that decision. Some cruise lines have made a decision of vaccinating the entire crew. So NCLH came out yesterday with that announcement, for example. Yes, you're right. So Saga as well. Now the crew, whatever, whatever was going to happen to our guests, whatever is required of our guests it is required of our, of our staff and our crew either way. That's to be expected. The, yeah. the answer is going to lie in a game. Now we, we, have, we, still haven't, we still haven't pulled the trigger on this one, right? I know Saga in the UK is, is probably the first cruise line that's going to go out there with the requirement for vaccination. Again, it's going to come down to the airlines. We, we truly honestly believe that. The, 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 it's, it's, it's going to be the actions of the airlines. What is their requirement going to be? Because if the, if the airlines turn around and say for international travel, you will have to show, you know, a, a proof of vaccination or your travel passport. This is becoming a new, new word as well in industry, right? It's a travel passport. Um, then obviously you're abiding by the airlines, which means, you know, you're going to have to be vaccinated either way. Um, it is the question that we don't have the answer for. Because right now, has Viking made an official announcement regarding the crew? Uh, no. Not, not official. No, okay. we're, hold, we're holding um, off at the current time. I'm, I'm not, uh, obviously, me not being an employee of Viking, I can probably say this. I expect that you guys would probably come up with an announcement very soon. So I, you know, you, you can't say it. You're Probably, you know, you, you can't we, see it, but I know when we came up with this uh, just before, but it's for holidays, right? Um, and, you know, pretty much quizzing our entire crew member. Now, again, here's another advantage of Viking, um, when, especially when we come at the, the Riverside, I think, is that all members of staff are Viking contracted. They're, they're contracted through Viking. Um, some cruise lines actually do their manning and their employment through third party bases, as we do not. We handle and manage all our own contracts. So um, everybody was saying questionnaires and you know, we obviously we were reaching out to, to all our crew members and staff members and you know, obviously they'd be ha more than happy, the results were more than happy to have vaccination to continue working. It would, it would not be an issue. Right. Um, what, what is Viking going to do with people that refuse to follow the protocols and to you know comply with wearing masks and so forth? We're gonna put you in the dungeon. Um, <laughs> you know, we we are there first of all to you know you're gonna have just as you do right. You have the letter of agreement right. So as you as you enter into this, your form, what the, your medical form that you're gonna be completing prior to and, and just uh, before embarkation is going to have all this literature in it to say, when I sign this form, I hereby agree to abide by rules, regulations, etc. The staff are not there to be police. They are there maybe. I'm the worst one for it. If I go in, my wife always says, have you got your mask? Have you, and I'll forget my mask, you know, 10 months into, this, into the pandemic. It will be. They'll be there as a reminder. The signs will be there. The, the spots on the, on the ground will be there. So there'll be gentle, friendly reminders to everybody. We, you know, we don't anticipate in people coming on and say, I'm not wearing a mask. Well, if you're not, if you refuse to wear a mask, then you are refusing what the, the A, uh, you are refu you're refusing the orders of the captain because while you're on board, you're under the captain's orders, just as you would be at a, a drill or anything like that. You have to abide by the laws, regulations, and by the captain's rules by being on the vessel. If you are on a tour, and local, you know, local requirements are that mask wearing is a requirement, and you know, maybe you get seen by an author the authorities there. You know, you're you're under the authority of, of the of the regulations of the of the city, town, and country that that we're visiting. Um, you know, so. We can give friendly reminders, but point blank refusal will be going against your your terms of uh, of embarkation. Right, right. Um, and, um, and 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 you know, kind of to address uh, John's question, um, you know, kind of it's based on that, right? Uh, uh, how will excursions be handled in various countries? Face masks, you know, countries not being open, etc. Uh, I just want to quickly kind of address that since we've already talked about it. 
um, um, all, all excursions are going to be at least initially handled by Viking, right? So you have to have a Viking excursion to get off the ship, right? And so, okay. yes, you'll abide, you, you have to stick to the regulations of each country and the regulations of Viking, which are going to be to continue to keep safe distancing and safe uh, and, and certain basic protocols. Um, it, but, but one thing's for sure is before cruising can even start, right? And before we can even, you know, dock at any country, the country has to be okay with us getting off and visiting that country. And there's going to be some protocols and there's going to be some requirements. Um, you know, but, uh, Darren, you were saying that you think that uh, the airlines are going to come up with uh, those um, vaccine requirements. I, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going, I'm, my, my personal opinion is I think the countries will. Right, just like some countries require for yellow fever. Secondary, uh, absolutely secondary. Uh, you know, and, and, and I wasn't saying that the airlines are going to. I'm saying that there's, there's going to be a step. Right, it'll be the airlines first, the country second, and I think then the cruise lines. Because it's no point in us putting out a recommendation, a requirement if it's if it's going against what the airlines are having and what the countries are having. So I agree with you totally. There's going to be there's several factors into. Uh, you know, before we say Viking requires it for sure. Yeah. Terry, Terry's asking, will passengers be able to explore destinations on their own? Mm -hmm. Very good indeed. Um, there was a question that we posed to our team. Uh, many of us did. Uh, you know, if you consider the fact that our pre our pre excursions, right, are very um, very much loose in their planning, so we don't expect to be able to lock people up in their in their staterooms, right, prior, prior in their in their hotel rooms, for instance if they're not on a Viking tour. Um, if you're looking at a pre-extension, whatever you decide to do, obviously is gonna go according to what the local regulations are. Um, number two, if you have been independently traveling around and doing tours prior to cruising, you're still gonna get tested before you get on the ship. So that will be a deterrent for that. Then it's all going to come down again. I mean, it, sound, it starts to sound like a, an echo, right? it will come down to the rules and regulations set forth by those towns and cities where the, you know, only residents may be walking around. Tour companies have to be under the auspice of a tour guide. Uh, for those of you who maybe travel to Russia uh, with us, you know, same aspect there, right? You have to be under the, under the, um, uh, <clears throat> under the, um, the togetherness of, of, a, of an official guide there. So what we are saying initially is, Tours will be conducted by Viking. Those will be your options to you, or otherwise we abide by whatever the local regulations are. So, so, so there's no there's no official uh, requirement from Viking on that regard. Like there's no official statement of Viking saying you have to be on the bubble bubbleish type of. Uh, no, we, 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 again, we're not, we're not, we won't be putting that out there um, until maybe, you know, until, you know, France so, says it's a requirement or Germany says it's a requirement. So yeah. at this point in time, what we do though is encourage folks to join Viking on its, on its official tours. I mean, that, that's going to be, that's why we're, we're, we're expanding the amount of tours we're going to be offering. We know then that those folks have joined us are within the confines of the Viking tour guides and we've followed the rules and regulations. Um, so it, it, it makes sense for you to join us and not do something independently because if, as you go off independently and do your own thing and get on public transportation that's maybe not been sanitized and yeah. such like that, you are, you know, you then increasing the, the chances of bringing something off the ship onto the ship. Right. And, and I, think, I think that cruising, again, cruising at the beginning of the season is going to be a little bit different than towards the end of the season. I mean, once people are vaccinated and once, you know, we can officially have proof of vaccination for those, you know, for when that happens. And I think things are going to be a little bit different, right? I think that... It, it will be a lot different. You know, we, I think, Carlos, and, and to stress, and um, we, we've written these laws, and I call them laws, right? The, or this policy, rather, and this program. Um, you know, based on worst case scenario, right? So th this is when we return, we want to see it as, as, as bad as it is. And it, again, to your point, nobody's going anywhere until we can travel international, until those countries and, and, and regions open up to us. 
uh, yeah. until that point, nothing happening, you know. So uh, it's very important to keep that. Will there be sacrifices initially in the beginning with the masks and not being able, maybe not being able to go independently? Probably yes. Um, yeah. You know, but should travel will this change. Is but right. to your point, it's will return. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, David Guzman, your question is going to be addressed uh, independently, separately, privately. Uh, Fanny, I think we just answered your question. And then William has another one. Um, so if local regulations will not restrict you from going around on your own, Viking has no problem letting you back on the ship. Just like we said, as of right now, there's no official statement of that being the case. Hopefully, um, by the time that we actually get on to sailing, we'll have a little bit more information on that, but it will be, as of right now, based on what Viking is saying, it's gonna be up to the countries to determine that. Um, okay, here's a non-COVID related question. I pick myself up. <laughs> You're gonna love this one, Darren. You're gonna love it. Come on. <laughs> I'm sorry in advance. Why does Viking require full payment so far in advance of a cruise date? We've previously cruised on Viking Ocean 2018 and had absolutely wonderful experience. That's it. I read so many comments on various boards about full payments required anywhere between six months to a year to as far as 18 months. It is a lot of money to lay out in advance and apparently quite different than our experience with Regen Celebrity and other cruise lines. Uh, that question was asked by a Carlos Eatery, was it? I swear to God, it was by Michael Carr. Michael, I had to see your name. <laughs> Michael, not <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> I, we've had this question so many times. You know what? <laughs> when I started here, I was seven foot three. I'm now five foot three. You know, uh, I've been beaten down for the last eleven years, ten years, uh, and, and I'm, I'm I'm happy to take that. Absolutely, I am. Um, you know, Viking traditionally has always been different to cruise line to other cruise lines just really that's that 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 has been the case have we had instances in the past where we've held promotions that's always very important to remember promotions it was only promotions that were being provided a six month prior to cruise full payment there was a laxy daisy easy to overcome final payment requirement and for for a period of time there but what we've done at Viking and those who have traveled with us, in order to ensure that you, you, know, you get the stateroom in the category of the cruise date that you really wanted, and we are booking and opening our, our windows two years in advance to ensure you get best pricing, value, amenities, and such like that, that's, we've, we've rewarded those folks in the past. We really, really have. So it's always been that final payment situation. We have looked at the situation, um, and trust me, ladies and gentlemen, when I say this, and Carlos will back me up, I'm, I'm on your side for, for most, for a lot of this, right? I, I am on your side of, of, for a lot of this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna get you off the hook on this one easily. Um, guys, this is, this is, uh, uh, th th this is what I think, okay? Um, and I think that, uh, you know, if I, if, if I had an opportunity, I'm going to have a conversation with Michelle uh, Segwesser on this one day. I think that what Viking has not really done a really good job at is at expressing to our guests the fact that the value that they're offering is so great that it's worth having to pay in advance, right? Mm -hmm. Some cruise lines out there are offering 10% discount if you pay a time of deposit, if you're paying full a time of deposit. And the funny thing is, most people take it. Most people are willing to pay 10, to get a 10% discount for paying a time of booking full payment, right? And nobody complains about it. They love it, right? And so what I, where I think Viking has failed to, to, to kind of explain pe to people is they're offering this 10% discount every single time. And the value that they're offering is so great that because of the demand, uh, it, it, you know, the value is so great that it generates a demand that is so great that people are just willing to pay so far in advance. Um, they, you know, that said, that said, um, you know, you, they're, they're, yes, there are people that have other bookings uh, deposited have an opportunity to extend their final payment to six months. And yes, that said, um, you know, there are opportunities 
where when requested prior to deposit via the relationship that we have with Viking, um, and this is recently though, by the way, this is a change that was announced last week uh, to us, uh, we're able to work on that final payment date a little bit. It just has to be, uh, this is a recent change from last week and uh, we're able to, because of our relationship, request that um, um, and, and, you know, and, and, and make some, some changes there. So yes, um, you know, again, uh, every, you know, there's many cruise lines out there that offer incredible value. Um, and there are many cruise lines out there that offer this 10% discount for paying an event. And, and in the case of Viking, you know, they just don't look at it as giving it, they just don't give people the option, right? They're just offering really good pricing and really good value, just that's kind of the requirement that they have in place. Um, and so- um, That was a recent change, Carlos, to your point, um, which is definitely, which is something we've, you know, we've suffered on for sure. Um, and there could be more coming down the pipeline, uh, which will probably make people a little happier as well when we start looking at final payments and, and uh, different rewards for that. So uh, something, something's on the burner, let's put it that way. Um, here, here's a question from William. Viking offers some shore excursions in every port as part of the cruise fair. If Viking excursions are gonna be required to get off the ship, will there be no additional cost? I'm assuming, William, that you mean for any other excursion if you don't choose the, main, the, the one that is included? Great, great question by William there. And, and, and it is because we are saying then the fact that, look, you know, we're saying, A, you, you've, you've got to come with us, right? That's, that's kind of what we're saying in inverted commas. And then kind of then giving you restriction. Okay, but this is your complimentary. What we are doing and what we're working on is actually extending the amount. Remember during our presentation, we said we were going to break up into smaller groups, hire more tour guides. Well, on top of that as well, we are looking to open up different tours as well in, in the complimentary included tour section as well. Our optional tours will always be there. Um, you know, the specialty tours where there is an additional cost, but we aren't, we fully understand the situation. And as a result of that, we're looking now on the expansion, not looking now, we've, we've been working on the expansion of more complimentary included tours in those ports of call as well. Okay, good. So uh, with that, um, oh, right, other than the included ones, as I often will have seen before, um, right, is the included I think I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing what, 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 yeah, exactly. So that's, that's our, our plan, our proposal to say, we understand, we just don't, don't want to take that same tour. You know, what else can we provide you as a complimentary included um, excursion when we're in port as well. So, yeah. Exactly. Um, so, so with that, you know, I basically read all the questions that I had in the chat box. So I'm, I'm happy to open up the mics and have you guys ask uh, some questions. I have uh, Sarah raising her hand, Sarah Robinson. How are you, Sarah? Hi, thanks so much for taking my question. Can you hear me okay? Clearly. Okay. Um, I just had uh, a question. It's, it's honestly not really COVID related, um, but uh, I have had uh, one river cruise with Viking and hoping to do an ocean cruise this year. And the only problem I can think of, everything has been wonderful, is that you have to pay this deviation fee if you want to stay um, a little early and spend some time in your arrival or departure city. And um, other than, you know, kind of making it a, a hard inducement to choose the Viking package. Um, what is the kind of justification for that fee? It seems like kind of a hidden fee that um, can can add up. Since I I don't know who would want to fly to Rome and not and go right from the airport to a cruise ship. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I I definitely wouldn't be one of those people. Sorry. The, the question. The answer is pretty quick. Um, pretty easy on our on on our on our behalf. When we do these charter, uh, when we do these contract flights, right? Uh -huh. We we are planning those flights based on departure of the day before for the day of arrival for the cruise date. Anything out and above those dates, we are not getting contractual air with those airlines. So we are being ourselves being charged additional air costs 
So let's say your air was 499 round trip Europe. For that particular, if you're coming the day before as an independent or whatever it would be, we as a company might be getting charged 699, 799. So it's, it's just a way really of, you know, um, providing us a way of provide, still being able to provide you the service of booking the air outside of the cruise dates. Um, that's unfortunately, you know, it's not the same, it's not the same price for 365 days a year and our contracts are based on those dates that we, that we submit to the airlines for contract. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your question, Sarah. Uh, Judy, Judy Jacobs, how are you, Judy? Thank you for being with us. How are you? Yes, uh, we gotta unmute you for a second, hold on. Here I am, here I am, can you hear me now? <laughs> I sent in a question earlier by email and didn't hear an answer. How do you extend your policies and privileges to single guests, guests who are traveling alone? Is there a surcharge on the room or is there a, you know, how do you handle it? Absolutely. And, um, you know, on a, a, we do get from time to time, obviously, the request for, for single occupancy. In a general situation, it will be 200%, right? Unfortunately. Um, but I can assure you right now, if you were to work with one of the um, Luxury Cruise Connection agents there to call into Viking on your behalf, we are currently offering reduced single supplement rates for both river and ocean. So you could be looking maybe at 125%, 150%, depending uh, on the cruise that you're looking at on the cruise date. On, so giving a reduction of the single supplement. But there is still going to be a single supplement. There so. will be a single supplement, yeah. We have two little ships. Now, uh, we, we, were, you, were you looking at river cruising or ocean cruising? River cruising. River cruising. We have two magnificent ships. Beautiful little ships. They're not a Viking long ship, but they were the, 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 the genesis of those, those ships. The prestige and the legend, particular prestige, because she has an outside cafe and everything. Now, the Viking prestige actually still has today five single cabins. Ah. They are priced. They are priced as a single, as a single stateroom. It's the Viking prestige and the Viking legend. They're just a little small, right? They, they are, yes. Um, yeah, the legend, I love the prestige. So the legend was the first ship I went on and the prestige and it had the Aquavit, has the French balconies, just doesn't have the, the owner's suite or such like that. They are a little bit different, but um, again, they were built with- They're smaller than the average. Uh, they, they are a little smaller, yeah. They were built, the prestige was built- do they each have balconies? They have French balconies. Oh, that, which means nothing. That's like Romeo and Julia. Yeah. Balconies That's didn't it. exist until, you know, That's until we built balcony. I mean, it's a balcony. Thank you for exactly. the answer. Exactly. Yeah, so the first ship up, but you know, obviously on um, itineraries on Danube and, and, and Ryan mainly, but uh, yeah, that, that, that's one way of looking at it. Otherwise, see what the single supplement rate is with, with, one, of the, uh, with one of the agents. I know we are we are currently offering reducing supplement rates. Wonderful, thank you so much. Well, welcome. Good evening. Thank you for being with us. Uh, we have Harry. Harry is raising his hand. Let me unmute you, Terry. Go ahead. You you gotta click unmute. Okay. Can you hear me now? There you go. We can okay. hear you just fine. Thank you. Uh, a question further uh, on the um, air travel. So if you're not traveling on the specific dates, you want to extend your trip either at the front or the end, is, it, is there any benefit to booking with Viking? Does Viking have certain leverage and purchasing power that you can still get advantage from? Yeah, we, 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 we do, Terry, in, in a way. Um, again, very highly purchased among our, our, uh, our uh, guests is the purchase of a pre and a post, uh, particularly on the pre side, of course. You know, you want to make sure you get there a few days later, earlier actually, you know, and get to enjoy some of the city and towns that we may not necessarily be cruising. Now, when we, when we produce those in packages, we produce them in two different levels. We have a standard package and we have a, an upgraded package where then we can look at five-star hotels as opposed to a four-star hotel. Those packages are built between, can vary, mainly two to three days, some of them four days, five days, if we're doing Iceland, for instance. Um, they Obviously, they incorporate your hotel stay, 
Um, but very light on the tour side. You always have a Viking representative there and breakfast. It's, it's, it's really is a, a, you know, a shell, if you would, because either you're about to embark on something that's quite regimented, right? Or you've just come from a cruise that was rather regimented. So we want to give you a more free time on that. Obviously, what you will then do is if you're booking your air through Viking as well as the pre or post package, um, the, those surcharges that were referenced earlier, we obviously absorb that um, in, into a cost because those are dates that we would have air contracts coming in for those pre and post stays. You know, could you, could you get the hotel personally by yourself at a lower rate? Probably could, I'll be honest with you. But then you're not going to get to enjoy the, the matter of a transfer, you know, a pick up and transfer to the hotel and hotel to ship um, the tour guide as well as um, the Viking representation at the hotel. So there's a, quite a few items are built into, into what, in addition to what that hotel could cost you. That, that's I, mean, I have actually done that before, um, but I was thinking beyond that, you know, for example, I might want to do a cruise to Iceland but extend into Europe for a month after that. Oh, so, yes. You know. Yes. Sorry. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and we are able to offer you, if you're booking the Viking Air, we are able to offer you an air extension, a deviation, either 30 days prior or, th or if you'd like to, 30 days post then as well. But then we will be looking at deviation costs, I believe varies between $100 and $150 based on the, uh, based on the gateway that you'll be flying out of. But we are able to extend your arrival and your and your departure air by 30 days. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. Good. Yeah. So that's that's a that's a that's a good question, and and uh, we you know I think I think um, in in every single case we'll have an opportunity mm -hmm. to look at uh, you know what makes more sense for you, and that's where we come in and really personalize the experience. And advise you properly right and if it makes sense to use vikings air then that's what we'll recommend if it makes sense to use our air as an agency then that's what we'll recommend um in any case uh you know we're here for you to just answer those questions every single time um we have um okay uh lana is asking further to sarah's question do we have the same penalty if we use Viking free cruise, uh, I believe that you mean the, uh, the, the air deviation fee and the answer is no. If you're utilizing Viking free cruise, there's no air deviation. Built into the package. Built into the package. Uh, William is asking us, please look into having contract for air, travel for a day or two before a cruise starts. It is very hard to start a cruise having crossed seven time zones and then boarding this, the, the ship with no time to adjust your body to local time. Also about the air flying in a day or to earlier avoid avoids the problem of flight, uh, flight delays causing you to mi miss the boat. Um, if you do miss the boat and you had Viking Air, by the way, you're covered by Viking on that, so no problem there. But yes, Viking, uh, you know, it's not that you cannot fly a few days before. It's just that there's a small deviation fee whenever that's the case, and 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 they'll accommodate that. Um, but, if it's with an airline, if it's an airline that we're contracted with, I mean, normally that deviation could be, as I said earlier, you know, you, you could be just looking at an additional hundred dollars per person, you know, so it's definitely worth looking into it if you're considering doing something independent prior to the cruise. So, uh, uh, Darren, can you explain what Air Plus does? Air Plus, yeah, absolutely. So Air Plus is, uh, it's, it's basically what that is giving you. Now let's, let's take the big picture again. Let's just look at the 300,000 passengers, as I said. Viking has software in position and, and created whereby if you're not using Air Plus, the system is running constantly. Carlos, you probably have this by you as well. And it's searching the best airline, your best flight for you from your destination, minimizing uh, stopovers. Um, providing you the best connection times if there's connections. Also looking then at the price structure, right? All the time, all the time, all the time. And then we get round to about, you know, what's, uh, what's it, uh, 70 days, 75 days prior to cruise, that system for that cruise will then stop and it will be able to give you what the best availability was throughout that time, what's available to you. That's just the regular Viking Air. Now, if you are looking to deviate, 
if uh, you if you're looking for a particular airline, if you want to make sure that your luxury cruise connection um, agent can speak to a human being in our air department, that's where Air Plus comes in. And with Air Plus at that certain time as well, we can uh, once we find the air that you wish for and everything, and we're able to lock that in, you are locked into your air agreement at that time of finalization, well before the time. So, um, you know, it's it, regular air works just fantastic. We've got high satisfaction rating. Air Plus obviously is a, is a service that we provide, uh, which obviously gets an even higher service rating because, you know, we are working with a, an individual. You can only imagine how big our air department would have to be to be able to speak to every client and every agent working on behalf of their clients with 300,000 passengers. <laughs> and, 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 here's, and here's how we, what we do and we, where we come in, right? As luxury cruise connections and as luxury travel agency, we, we're not a call center, right? We're, we, we handle each one of our clients individually, personally. Uh, we, have, we create personal relationships with, with our clients so we get to know exactly what our clients want and make sure that we personalize the experience, the detail. And so that, that, that's where we, I guess one of the big things that I want to mention there is we're not just travel agents, right? We call ourselves travel advisors. And we're here to recommend what we think it's best for you based on what we know of you. And then we'll be able to let you know, look, in this case, we recommend you take the Air Plus and this is what we're gonna be able to do. And then we know how to best manage that with uh, a Viking and then compare the different options and then make recommendations of what we think are the best right options. Now, a lot of the heavy lifting. lifting for you. Um, wow. So, Guys, I know that you know, we're, we're a little bit past uh, four. We're not rushing anybody. We're happy to stay here and a answer more questions. But just in case, uh, know that this presentation is being recorded and we're going to be emailing it to everybody. So for whatever reason anybody has to jump up but still interested in learning what else we have to say, uh, know that you're going to receive this, 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 uh, this uh, a recording of this event in your email very soon. So. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, what other questions do you have? Who else wants to? Uh, dog, I see you're uh, unmuted yourself. Is there a question you want to ask us? No? Maybe? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, if not, any, anybody else? If anybody wants to um, ask anything else, please. Please. If, look, if, you know, just addressing a comment that I'm getting, getting um, internally. I want, I, want to, I want everybody to know that we are very respectful and understanding of everybody's um, um, you know, feelings about you know, planning travel for an event, and especially under the uncertain conditions that we're in today, right? And so what we like to say is, is let us know what your concerns are. Because most of the times we're able to address you know, the concerns, you know, we, sometimes we get clients that calls and says, look, you know, I, I don't want to take in, I don't, I don't want to risk my money. Right? I don't want to risk my deposit. I don't, you know, I don't, I don't want to make any decisions. Right. And what we like to say to that is given the current circumstances and the flexibility that the that Viking and every single cruise line is giving everybody right now, when it comes to booking, right, where you literally can cancel up to how many days prior, uh, uh there? Uh, risk free program, which, um, you know, is currently in position now and, more than likely will be going there in February again. So up to 20, up to 24 hours prior. So literally you can, you can, you can make your booking. Like, so if this, this is a case where somebody knows they want to go on Viking, but it's uncertain, uh, you know, what's going to happen with my money if they don't go. Right. And so they, Viking has this, this policy, it's called risk-free policy. You can literally cancel your cruise 24 hours. You woke up 48 hours prior to your cruise and you said, mm, I don't want to go. You can cancel and get a hundred percent of your money in the form of a future cruise credit and you can move it for another cruise and you risk absolutely zero money, right? And right. so there's so much flexibility being offered right now that what we like to tell our clients is if you know you want to cruise, you know, just block your space because availability is running low, right? And we don't, we don't say this just to wow. encourage people to book. I mean, last thing we want is make anybody feel uncomfortable. We just want, um, you know, we want people to just hold the space. So they, what we, we, the way we explain this is, you're, you're buying yourself the choice. You're buying yourself the choice to decide whether you go or you don't. Because if you don't do it right now, you're just not gonna have the choice because availability is not gonna be there. So availability is already very limited. So Michael is asking me, does risk-free also offers for a full refund? And so 
you know, the answer, the straight answer to that is no, it doesn't offer for a full refund, but Viking specifically offers great flexibility. You can transfer it to somebody else. And uh, um, Darren, correct me if I'm wrong, but if you don't use the, 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 the um, voucher in so long, you're, no, no? We're talking about two different things. Okay, so, that's, so that's, that's if you have a voucher from a Viking suspension, but not for risk. Correct, from a future. Okay, so let me, let me rephrase that so that people know what I was talking about. Yeah, so you actually brought up voucher, okay, so if you have a voucher that was given to you because there was a suspension by Viking on a ship, on a cruise, then you have the flexibility of transferring, you have the flexibility of, of using that. Uh, and if you don't, you, have the, you, you also have the option of getting a refund if you didn't use it in two years. But if it's a risk-free voucher, then the conditions are a little bit different. Can you just uh, elaborate on that a little bit? I will, sure, absolutely. It's, it's pretty much the same, except the fact that, yes, you do have 20, up, in, up to 24 hours before departure to say, I'm not ready, I'm not going. Uh, step away, the money's on that, booking without any penalty can then be transferred. You have then two years to transfer those funds to a future booking on a, on a risk-free. There is no, there's no refund on a risk-free. It's not transferable, uh, but it still okay. gives you peace of mind. Yeah. There's two different. Right. So it's not, so the risk-free is not transferable, right. but, but you do, you do have, 100% of your money in the form of a future cruise yeah. I mean, you get your taxes back in form of cash, right? And, and I think very important to remember when we were talking about final payment there and the, the, now the ability and a little more leeway that we're given as you propose to make your reservation to make final payment up to a year before, you know, you, you can add that element to the fact, uh, you know, add that to your risk-free program. So, you know, pay your $500 deposit per person now for a 22 or 23 booking, you know, get your final payment by the end of the year. And then, you know, if, if you decide to walk away from that, you know, you're, you're a hundred dollars out. And that, that's basically, you know, the, the, the best way to look at that until you make that final payment, we go into penalty. Right. And so when it comes, when it comes to risk-free vouchers, um, uh, Michael, I'm going to address uh, your additional questions in a second, but when it comes to uh, risk-free vouchers, um, it includes Viking Air, right? Uh, and it also includes insurance if the insurance was purchased with Viking, but um, correct me if I'm wrong. The only thing that it cannot be used for is insurance. Is that correct? Purchase insurance because that has to be a whole separate transaction. transaction. It's a legality, right? So, if, so if the insurance was included, right? So, it, so if insurance was included in your original booking. Yes, you get a voucher in that amount, but unfortunately, that little piece of the voucher cannot be used to purchase insurance again. So that's the only thing that you have to cash for it. You must make, make, yeah. And those, those are just legal, legal circumstances. That's not Viking. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and, then, and then, so, but, but yes, you can use these vouchers to purchase another cruise with air as well. Um, upgrade. You know, if you have, if you have overage, you know, then, then you can use those additional fees for the purchase of, uh, upgrades, air, you know, call it what you, you, you just can't use it for onboard spend. You've got to use right, it for right. um, um, it, Carolyn is asking us, um, and I know she was addressed by uh, Jazz internally, but I'll ask this uh, for the entire public. Uh, she's asking if, if, if I book an ocean cruise, can I then use the vouchers for a river cruise? Um, and absolutely. absolutely, not only can you use it for a river cruise, but you can also use it for expedition cruise, or you can, you can for Mississippi, for Europe, anything, anything. Yep. Viking. You know, there's a, there's a reason we changed our name from Viking Cruises to simply Viking. It, basically, when we say it's Viking, it covers all entities. Interesting. Um, and um, and um, can name changes be made on a reservation, an itinerary? So that's, that's a question we have to be able to look at. Okay, so um, uh, I think we lost Darren there for a second. I'm not sure if it's, um, Darren, I think we lost you there for a second. You're back now, you seem to be, I see, oh, there it is, yeah, I had some, just a slight delay there. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you now. Um, you know, situations with name changes are, you know, deemed as actual cancellations by, by the cruise line. So it's not simply going in and making a name change. So I, I would, we would have to look at the, 
uh, booking on a, on, a, on a specific individual basis? How far in is that booking? Is it under penalty? Uh, quite, quite a few. I think, I think something that is important to clarify there, uh, uh, Michael, maybe this, this might answer other people's questions as well. When it comes to vouchers with Viking, the voucher is really not, the holder of the voucher is not the payee. The holder of the voucher is the passenger, the guest. So, un, you know, unfortunately or fortunately, however you want to see it, right? If there are two guests in a reservation, regardless of what credit card was used or what bank account was used, the holder of the voucher is the guest. It's under the guest's name, not the person that paid. Yeah. So it's just important to keep in mind because when it comes to name changes, well, in this case, if you consider transferring a voucher, which we just said, when it comes to risk-free vouchers, that's not allowed. When it's about, um, you know, when it's a uh, voucher from a cancellation, from a suspension from a Viking, I think that's, 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 that's allowed. And we, we know that um, when we get into the specifics, the conversation might get a little bit complex. And so that's why, I want you guys to know that you can rely on us to, you know, follow up with any questions or any specific questions. If you have a booking, if you have a voucher, um, you know, uh, some people are asking us, you know, if they have vouchers, but they booked, they had booked that directly with Viking can now they use that voucher to book with us. They can indeed. If yeah. So, so if, if this, so exactly, and and we'll be happy. We'll be happy to uh, uh, be you know to assist you and, and, and help you with that. Um, when it comes to um, when it comes to those vouchers, again, they belong to the guest, right? So we'll be happy to bear, help you with 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 those vouchers, no matter how you originally um, acquire them. Okay. Um, again, we stand very firm by our mission to make travel dreams come true. So um, you know. We're here to help you with anything that we can. Uh, we always like to tell our clients that please count on us, even if you already booked with another, with anybody, any, even directly with Viking. If you have a question, ask us. You know, we, you know, we, we would be lying to ourselves if we, if we didn't, if we didn't make ourselves available to answer any questions for our clients. That's our mission as a company, and and we're here to, you know, we stand strong on that. So, um, Juanita is asking if something happens to one of the persons booked, can the single person still sell? With that room, um, Darren. Um, you're going. You now. You're stepping into um, you know insurance situations here. Um, cancellation again. How far out is this change taking place? Um, the moment if, if it was the second person was cancelled, and it could then very well become a single occupancy. And now you're looking at 100 percent. Right. Let me let me be let me be a little bit more specific uh, on that. And Juanita, let me know if we're answering your question as you meant it. Um, the the vouchers don't have. So let's say you have a so crew. Vouch, we, we, I, I didn't hear the word voucher. Sorry. Oh, I think I'm breaking up. With you know wh whoever your companion is, right? Um, and so the, the 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 sailing gets canceled, or you decide to take advantage of the risk-free cancellation. And you now are each one of you are holding a voucher. You don't have to travel together again. Each one of you can use those vouchers independently, either on a single cabin or in a in another new reservation with somebody else paying cash. So the the vouchers themselves are independent from the original booking or anything else. It just literally you can use that as money to pay for another cruise for yourself, right? And the other person for another cruise for, for them. Now if we, if we get into the conversation of, you know, that person cannot medically travel anymore or is no longer with us, unfortunately, then that's going to be a very specific circumstance. And then you bring it up to us, we go with Darren and we'll find it. Yeah, and these situations are arising, of course. You know, we start looking now over a spread of one year suspension and having vouchers that are, you know, valid for another two years. So much can happen within a three year and window right Pers in personal lives etc so we understand that um you know we, we when those okay, when those do occur to your point we, we will handle them on, on on an individual basis carlos i don't mean to be rude but i i, I do have one minute remaining because i gotta get on to another one but i'm, okay. I'm happy to take the next one no it's okay and if you have to go we can stay on and answer some more questions for people as well so why don't we do this um um uh, Juanita, just very quickly, if the room is already paid and you apply a voucher, you'll get a refund, okay, on your cash. Um, Darren, why don't we do this? Why don't we officially say goodbye to you? Because 
we hate you know, to do this. <laughs> we're, going to, we're going to stay on. So if anybody has any more questions, you know, we'll be here to continue to answer those. If there's something I don't know, then I'll reach out. I'll reach out to Darren and then I'll get back to you as well. I just um, love the fact that this went on for so long. It was great. <laughs> thank you very much for being with us and thank you very much for your time. We know you're very busy, but uh, we appreciate the time that you've given us and the opportunity to answer all these questions for guests. We had a very active uh, presentation today. Um, you know, that really says a lot about everybody really wanting to get back into cruising and we're very oh, yeah. excited to, uh, to see this <laughs> in full days and we're feeling it within our clients going. So, uh, Darren, you go take care of your business. Thank you. Darren, one quick question. Don't forget to send me back the email about that reservation. <laughs> Never misses a moment. <laughs> you, you know which one I'm talking about, right? Very good. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right, guys. Thank you all so very much. And uh, Carlos, I look forward to getting the questions from you. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Bye, everybody. You're Thank welcome. you so much. I'm off Thanks. to Australia, New Zealand right now. I'm going to do Australia, New Zealand presentation. Help me. That's, that's fantastic. <laughs> well, well, we'll hopefully do one uh, for our guests as well, and we can invite everybody to learn about Australia, New Zealand. It's Australia Day, apparently. That's what I just found out. All right, guys. Thank you all so very much for your time, for your questions and participation. It's been a pleasure. Till next time. Thank you. Thank you, Darren. And so I'll stay, I'll stay on for a little while longer um, because I know that some of you might still have some questions, and so I want to make sure that I address every single one of them that's what we're here for um and 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 i won't i won't go until i make sure that everybody everybody's question has been addressed hey carlos yes can i just uh, let everyone know without a doubt luxury cruise connections will have a better value for you than booking directly with viking and if you already have a reservation directly with viking let us know because we can usually add extra amenities to it and then you'll have our service as well yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll expand on that, uh, Steve. Yes, so the, because, of, because we're part of Virtuoso and the relationship that we have with Virtuoso and the volume that we have with Viking, uh, we're able to you know, offer exclusive amenities like onboard credits or exclusive experiences that otherwise are not gonna be made available to um, direct guests, right? Um, uh, in, in many other cases, luxury cruise connections will have exclusive promotions uh, with, you know, additional value that is literally coming out of our commissions uh, that we'll share with our clients to make a particular promotion even more attractive. So that'll happen very often. Uh, we like to, um, you know, continuously offer uh, full value for our clients, and that will always be paired together with um, the personalized attention of your luxury cruise connections advisor, as well as the concierge service that we offer for everybody on each one of your bookings. So not only do you have the luxury cruise connections uh, advisor help, but also uh, the concierge team will reach out to you or you can reach out to them to ask for um, even restaurant reservations or um, you know, pre-cruise or post-cruise or during cruise activities, whatever you, whatever you wanna do, um, that is beyond the actual reservation. We have uh, a, a team that will help you with that uh, at no charge, by the way. It's part of our part of our complimentary service to you know continue to deliver on our mission to deliver luxury service. So, so that's a that's a really good point. Um, I have a question here. Uh, somebody asked me privately as well. Uh, if you have if I have a reservation with Viking, can I transfer it over to Luxury Cruise Connections? The straight answer is. Um, technically speaking, yes, if, you, if it's done within 60 days of deposit, right? If it's done within 60 days of deposit, it is no problem. If it's after 60 days of deposit, um, it will go through a different process, a lot more difficult, but still manageable. Um, so the answer is yes, if you, you know, if you book directly with Viking and you want to utilize our services and take advantage of some additional value and amenities, let us know and we can, of course, um, um, you know, add our credentials at reservation and, 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 and add some additional value. Um, I want to open it up to maybe some of our luxury cruise connections advisors that are on this call that, may, that have received or have gotten some questions from your clients. Want to kind of unmute yourself and ask those questions so that everybody else can listen. Um, JC, I don't know if you can you do you want to uh, jump in real quick and ask your questions on the 
for everybody else to listen. Um, so my client is asking, could I still travel in the cabin that is paid in full if the other person potentially couldn't travel? Can you, okay, so can you, I'm, I'm, um, okay, basically it sounds like Carlos, she's asking if the, her fellow traveler cancels, can she still go in the cabin? And I'm as a single traveler, correct. Oh, okay, yeah. so, sorry. Yes, the, an, the answer is, um, it's going to be based on the uh, penalties um, for each one of the case, for each, each case, right? But the straight answer is yes. If, if, if your companion cannot go and you still want to go, then most likely, um, based on the circumstances of the penalties, we'd have to either you know, be able to either issue a refund or issue a voucher, and then there might be additional uh, single supplement uh, payments too. Um, it's a very specific question. So um, if, if you have a, a, a specific example or specific booking that you want us to take a look at, then we can analyze whether or not there's any additional payments due. The right answer is yes, it can be done, just specifically, um, you know, how much. Yeah, what are, what are the protocols, right? I, we might have to add that to, uh, to Darren directly. So I'll send him an email. Okay. Um, so um, Judy, Judy has some additional questions on, um, on single supplements and, and how, you know, the size of the ships and the cabins. Um, Judy, I'm going to make sure that you're contacted directly by one of our advisors to uh, answer your questions. You're asking me if our company represents other cruise lines. Yes, we do. We represent every single cruise line. Um, our strongest relationships are going to be with premium, um, pre premium and upscale luxury, uh, uh, luxury cruise line, right? So, um, in the, in the upper tier, uh, region seven seas, Crystal Cruises, Silver Sea, Seaborne Cruises, um, then Oceana, Viking, Azamara, Celebrity, Holland America, Princess Cruises, uh, Disney Cruises, um, Royal Caribbean, Norwegian Cruise Lines. Um, I believe the only cruise line, well, and then in the River Cruises, uh, Ama Waterways, Scenic Cruises, uh, American Queen Steamboat, for those that are looking to travel the Mississippi here in North America. Um, um, obviously Viking, uh, in the river arena, uh, Uniworld, talk tours. Um, let's see who am I missing here? Huh? I'm a waterways. I said, I said, I'm a waterways. Um, Atlas, a Atlas voyages, Atlas, uh, ocean voyages. It's a, it's a brand new cruise line literally launching in 2021. Um, and, and they have brand new ships um, and, and incredible, incredible itineraries, by the way, uh, with overland packages as well. Uh, uh, you know, we, we, we started, it's a brand new cruise line, but it, we started dealing with them because of their backing and, and, and the people that are involved with that cruise line. We trust them. Uh, we believe it's a great, great addition to our portfolio. So, yes, um, we absolutely represent, we, you know, we're, we're full-fledged luxury travel agency. So we have incredible relationships with all these cruise lines that I mentioned, as well as tour operators, tour companies, airlines, transfer companies, insurance companies. Um, we've, been, we've been doing business. Hotels too, Carlos. Don't forget hotels, me. Well, of course. Both hotels and in travel insurance. Of course. We've been doing business under the Forest Travel uh, umbrella for over 35 years in Miami, Florida. Um, and, then, and then Forest Travel... Uh, we, you know, Forest Travel is focused in corporate travel, private jet travel, um, luxury hotels, and so forth. And so we decided to branch out the brand for specifically to service our clients on luxury cruises, and we called it Luxury Cruise Connections. So although Luxury Cruise Connections is a 10-year-old brand, we're part of a 35-year-old company. We've been doing this for a long time. We've had, we, we just have an incredible amount of clout in the industry. So um, anything you can think of. We can uh, we can serve. So I think the only cruise line that we really don't do business with is Carnival Cruise Line, um, not Carnival Corporation, because there's many cruise lines within the Carnival Group that we do do business with, but just Carnival Cruise Lines we don't, because we don't believe that they deliver the level of service that we that we stand for. Um, so, but thank you, Judy, for asking that question. Thank you. 
Let's see, what other questions do we have? Anybody wants to uh, open up your mic and maybe uh, share with us some, some thoughts, feedback? What did you think of this presentation? Did you like it? Did you enjoy it? Did we miss anything? Any feedback, suggestions for future presentations? What do you want to hear next? We have, uh, we have uh, several cruise lines that have asked us to participate on this uh, virtual events with our clients and we try to keep it very, um, you know, um, very exclusive. So we want to know from you what you want to hear next. What do you want to learn about next? Are you interested in learning about any particular destinations or any particular cruise line or anything else that you want to know of? Please share. Please share with us. Carlos, you might want to remind everyone for joining us today what they're going to get from biking. Oh my God. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, I, I'm watching you back. Don't worry. Thank you. <laughs> So, so all of you, all of you that attended today and that registered today are going to get a $200, um, uh, what is it? It's shipboard credit certificate up to $200. For, for new reservations. On biking for new reservations. Yes. So, um, if you, if you have an existing reservation with biking, we won't be able to apply it on to that one, but any new booking, uh, that you, that you make, you'll be able to apply it. So, um, yeah, so. We, you know, it, 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 any booking that is done or made within the next two weeks, is that correct, Denise? Yes, that's correct. So, two weeks and not available on the and expedition trips. Okay, so, so um, actually, when we do this, Denise, let's make it available for expedition and Mississippi ships, okay? okay. So, those $200 shipboard credit um, that, uh, that we're offering here originally uh, was for any cruise book. Um, within the next two weeks. Uh, and now we're including uh, Expedition in Mississippi into that mix so that we can just make it available for anybody that books right now. Um, by the way, for those that uh, were asking about final payment dates, know that when you are on board uh, a cruise with Viking, when you're aboard a ship uh, and you're in the middle of an itinerary, if you book on board, you'll be eligible for a six month uh, final payment date, okay? so. Uh, keep that in mind when we actually get back to cruising. Uh, make sure you book on board because you, you're going to have some extra perks when you do so. All right. Uh, Sally, I see you've unmuted yourself. Do you want to ask us something? <laughs> no, I was going to say thank you very much for today. It was very informative and uh, we really enjoyed it. And bonuses one, two. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you. We, really enjoy having you guys uh, on this on this presentations because you know that's it, it really allows us for an opportunity to interact and get to know you guys a little bit more and obviously you get to know us a little bit more as well so thank you for being here um jerry how about people who just booked a few days ago and put down a deposit already um yeah that, that's my guess that's jerry Chai. he just booked it last week uh, Jerry, uh, I like I like to say yes, but I don't know uh, because it's not coming from us. It's actually coming from Viking. Um, it, it's it's a little complicated. Sometimes we have to go by the rules, and 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 you know they, they let us know of these things very last minute, right? So um, we'll, we'll look at it. Okay, Jerry, Steve, you know, bring it up to me and and, and yeah, we'll uh, actually, Jerry, just to let you know, I just texted Carlos to even before you brought it up to bring it up to Carlos. So Carlos, I sent it to you on by text. Yeah, we'll, we'll definitely try our best. I mean, we, you know, we, of course, we live by making our clients happy. So anything that we can do. Thank you for joining us, by the way, Jerry. Thank you for being here. Let's see, let's see who else wants to uh, ask us any more questions. Linda, how are you, David? Do you wanna share with us what you thought about this, uh, this event tonight? Hi, am I on? Yeah. Oh, okay. Maybe thank you. Thank you for uh, having me. Uh, maybe I missed this question. What if the company goes bankrupt? That's a really good question. So, um, and, and, and trust me, we've had that question asked many times. Um, we are highly encouraging every one of our clients to purchase travel insurance with a third party, right? So although Viking offers great travel insurance programs, if you purchase insurance 
uh, with a third party insurance company, like one of the ones that we deal with, right? Either Travel Guard or, um, uh, um, or Allianz, then you'll be covered for bankruptcy um, if the cruise line were to go bankrupt, right? So if you put a deposit of whatever amount of money and you have insurance, especially the right type of insurance, at least we'll advise you properly on that, right? Then you will be covered in the case of bankruptcy and the insurance company will take care of you. Does that, does that make sense? Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate yeah, it. That, absolutely. Yeah, a lot, a lot of clients feel uncomfortable uh, with that, right? Especially um, with everything that is going on, you know what's going on with the publicly traded companies, but maybe you don't know much of what's going on with Viking because they're privately held and their information finances are not public. So we really encourage everybody to just, you know, although I, I must say this, um, all the cruise lines that we're dealing with, are in a great financial situation and are able to withstand no sailing for many, many more months. Viking, although privately held, this is not public information. Um, we've been doing business with them for a long time and we have relationships with the owner of the company. And, 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 and I trust that, uh, you know, that, that, that they're being very upfront with this. Now, I'll give you an example. Uh, there's a cruise line out there called Crystal Cruises which offers an incredible, incredible experience, and we love them dearly, uh, but they're going through some financial restructuring, right? And so for those clients that are making reservations with Crystal, we are, we are taking those deposits, but we're not giving those deposits to Crystal until we know for sure that, that Crystal is, um, is gonna be fine taking your money, right? So, we, and, and that's probably the only one that is in that situation. So we're taking very good, important steps to make sure that our client's money is safe. Um, and obviously by taking insurance, you, you, you can just you know, take that off your mind 100%. Good question though. Good question. Um, let's see, let's see, who else, who else? Linda Trimlai, how are you? How you doing? What did you think of tonight's event? Did you like it? Did you enjoy it? Mute. Okay. First of all, thank you for inviting me. I'm on the central time, so uh, I miss the portion of the Eastern time. So, <laughs> so here I am. Uh, just wanted to know, to see uh, what you had to say. So. Yeah, sure. Of course. And, and by the way, uh, you're gonna get a recording of today's event in your email yep. as, uh, will, a few hours. Um, I saw that, so yeah, I will yeah. review it. Thank you, thank you, and thank you for being here. Welcome. Thank you for being here. So um, uh, what I'm gonna do is, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna start kind of waving uh, our guests uh, goodbye for now, uh, but know that we're here for you, and we're just an email away, a phone call away, uh, a text away. Uh, we want you to know that we're here for you, to help you navigate through this craziness of the cruise world today. Um, we know that even though we've covered a lot of questions today, you might still have many more and we're here for you, okay? So feel free to ask, email us, call us. Um, like I said, even if you're booking in that book, it's not with us. You know, feel free to reach out to us. We'll be happy to help. Uh, we're here to build long-term long, long -term relationships. We're here to um, pamper you and take care of you like a luxury travel agency that we are, while at the same time um, making you know, the best out of your budget and, and, and saving you uh, a lot of money in the way, right? So um, with that, thank you very much for being here. And, um, and just feel free to uh, just ask any more questions. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to just kind of keep these uh, Zoom open for a little while longer while everybody starts logging on so just in case anybody has any more questions we can make sure we're here to address them okay so thank you thank you everybody thank you for joining us thank you linda appreciate it hi carlos this is david gossman how are you hi david how are you First of all, Jazz has been absolutely super. Uh, we first started planning this a year ago. We were supposed to go last summer, had to move our date to this summer, this coming summer, and then had to move it because our daughter's wedding got 
postponed, but we're still a little nervous about whether the cruise to Alaska is still going to go in June. Um, if they do end up having to cancel that, or if Canada gets weird about people coming into the United States uh, or from the United States and then getting on a boat, do you have contingencies for the Canadian, that brief moment that we're in Canada? Or is first question, second is, is that another instance where they'll give a 125% credit if it gets canceled on us? To the best uh, David, David, my connection went off for a second on your first question. Can you repeat that one more time? Okay, uh, since we're leaving from Vancouver and we'll be flying in from the US to Vancouver again and then going to your boat and then going right back into the United States, Canada has some uh, restrictions. Do you know whether there's contingencies for that? So, you know, um, I guess the straight answer is everybody's expectations is for those restrictions to be lifted, okay? Uh, but if those restrictions are not lifted for whatever reason, then yes, there will be there will be an opportunity. You know, you know Viking will um, um, suspend those sailings and give you an opportunity to take advantage of one twenty five percent of future cruise credits. Um, okay. Obviously, if you were to ask Viking, they're going to say we don't know. But I can tell you that it has been the mo uh, for the last several months, and there's no expectation for that to change. Right, so. Um, the expectation is yes, that would be the case. The cruise lines would then offer you, Viking would then offer you 125%. Um, there's a lot of talk about Alaska, you know, um, with the you know, more than seven night uh, cruise restrictions. So, you know, there's, there's, there, there's a possibility out there that some cruise lines might redeploy their Alaska season um, if the requirements change. Right, in terms of what they're allowed and how they're allowed to sail. Um, everybody is still very optimistic about Alaska. Um, but yes, I mean, at the end of the day, it's gonna be a little bit of that, of that, of that, of, of, of that situation where we're gonna to have to just wait and see what happens within the next few months. I think that we're gonna have a lot more clarity within the next two to three months max, right? Mm -hmm. um, like, like Darren said, um, you know, Viking usually is the first cruise line to suspend sailings. Usually when you see the different cruise lines suspending sailings in the industry, usually the, a, a Viking comes out first and they say, we're going to suspend March. And then all the other ones come in a couple of weeks later and say, okay, we're also going to suspend March, right? So there's something very interesting about the fact that Viking, that everybody else suspended April and Viking has not, right? And, and the fact that they're holding and holding and holding and holding is because I believe that Viking is out of every single one of the cruise lines, probably the most prepared in terms of protocols to get back on the waters. And, and, and I have a very strong feeling that although they've publicly stated that they don't expect to be the first one to be in the water, I think that that's more of a statement that, that, that what they're trying to say is we're just gonna rush into it. You know, we, we, we don't wanna be the first ones just to be the first ones. But if they're ready and they feel that it's safe, then they will. And and there's you know I I, I think you know as, as we said earlier we, we got those emails those forms that Viking sent to clients you know asking whether or not you'd be willing to take advantage of some last minute cruise offers. Um, that says that you know that hints us that there's a lot going on in a positive direction in terms of what we are going to what we're going to be able to see. I think that once cruise lines start selling the Caribbean. And once they prove themselves to be safe, then we're going to see Canada feeling a little bit more at ease with letting cruise lines navigate Canada or touch Canada, and as well with many other countries. Um, and I think that as people, more and more people get vaccinated, right? I think that we're going to start seeing a lot of stuff changing, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of stuff in this industry going in a very positive direction very soon. Everybody's counting on that. So, I hope, I hope that answers your question. Yeah, it does. And uh, fortunately, my fiance and I are both eligible for the vaccines in February. So her because she's a teacher and me because I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> and again, thanks, Jazz, for everything you've done for us. You've been great. You got it. Thank you, Dave. Appreciate it. <laughs>
Jazz, you're getting you're getting a lot of good reviews over here in the in the chat. Sally as well over here. Hey uh, David, I'll uh, I'll email you. I'll cash out you the uh, the money later. Thanks a lot. Though. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. Thank you. Thank, and thank you for for being part of our family, David and Sally and everybody. Thank you for our pleasure. Looking forward to it. Good. Good stuff. We had a, we had a we had a great afternoon. I love it. I enjoyed it. Uh, we gotta do this more often for sure. I think uh, we get we get we get people a, a big break. Uh, hey, this you're not um you're unmuted, you know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Just be careful what you say over there, you know. <laughs> Free cruises for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking you up on that. <laughs> no, no, I know. I, know. Uh, I, I appreciate everybody joining, and uh, I'm going to um, I'm going to let everybody get back to your business today. And and once again, thank you for joining us. And if you have any more questions, just email us, text us, call us. We're here for you. Okay. okay? All right. Yeah, everybody has have a great rest of the evening. Thank you for joining. Goodbye, everybody.